Welcome to Nerds Geeks in the Kitchen Sink. It is the podcast that's like hanging out at the video store. I'm one of your hosts, DK. I'm Chris, your other host. Improve if you feel like it. There you go. Uh, I don't know if I feel like improving this week. I think I just feel like hanging out. I'm good with that. Hanging good out. That. I know one thing that needs to improve, but we'll talk about that later. All right. <laughs> How have you been? What's been up? Not much. Just uh, trying to get everything organized. Um, I'm going to be bacheloring it for the next two weeks come Thursday. So Pretty cool. They're they're leaving for Ireland. Damn them. (laughs) But uh, no. Other than that, watching uh, I'm going to an early showing of uh, Deadpool Wolverine next week, so we will certainly be covering that. that. Yes, yep. for sure. I uh, was at the theater this last weekend and uh, got a one of those. Uh, the popcorn bag was Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, isn't that bag. exciting that people you want to know about? You didn't get the bucket. They didn't have it there yet. Oh, oh I also didn't ask, but I'm sure it's not available yet. <laughs> Uh, I went to an AMC theater to see Long Legs, and I'll talk about Long Legs later. But yes. uh, the AMC theater experience has not been great lately for me. Really, just the amount of just the amount of commercials alone, the amount of oh, ads yeah. and things well, you have to yeah. wade through. It's like you, they make you watch. I mean, I'm going to sound like a broken record. I'm sure everyone has this complaint, but you have to watch 25 minutes of trailers before the movie starts. Right. But then you also have to watch them talk about AMC theaters and they're like thanking their investors and telling you, uh, you know, <laughs> well, Nicole Kidman. Money somehow because yeah. they sure as hell aren't making it in the box office. It's just, it just makes me want to leave the theater. Yeah. Oh, I get that. I mean, you, but you know what? You almost look at it is right now because of the fact that we haven't been getting a ton of money making movies it's a necessary evil at this point Hmm. just to be able to have that theater experience i don't want theaters to go away so i mean i continue to go yeah have you seen anything recently uh not in theaters i haven't i just have not had a chance to to get out and go in it's kind of been a hectic but uh yeah deadpool wolverine is gonna be my First one, I may try to see Long Legs this weekend. Oh, cool. It depends on, and I'm okay, you know, that's something we are going to talk about a little bit, and I'm okay with spoiling it because you know me. Okay. I'm going with a fresh look anyway. Sure, sure. Okay. Any games, any things you've any, any I, read? I just really have not. I mean, uh, I'm I'm just trying to wait for some good stuff to come up i know i will try the new x-men run that's coming i'm gonna read the new wolverine which comes out at the end of the month i think yeah yeah i'm i'm gonna give that one a try it's called like wolverine revenge or something yeah i plan to pick that up i think that's what it is i'm gonna pick that up but uh i've just been trying to go out and find some some indie stuff that I haven't, like I said, I haven't been anywhere to really get anything lately. Well, so... we, my wife has been going crazy reading books and also graphic right. novels. Mm-hmm. She is absolutely obsessed with the Sandman universe and has been for a while. And I just introduced her to Dead Boy Detectives. I got her the Omnibus, right. so she's got everything. And then now she's into the Lucifer and um, okay. she's into those. And there's also a newer Sandman thing that is just about the, Oh, what's his name? The, the guy with the teeth for eyes, uh, the, the, whatever it's called. What's his name? Oh my God. Corinthian. Corinthian. Thank you. Okay. There's a series. that's like all about him. Oh, okay. She's been reading that, uh, all kinds of stuff. She's been reading that. So we, I've been, we've been going to Edwardsville to heroic adventures. Yes. Which that place rules. It's great. It they got a ton yeah, of they, stuff. Yeah, they do. Uh, Zora bought a manga adaptation of Dracula. Nice. So that's pretty cool too. Like as in the... It is Dracula. No, it's an adaptation of the book Dracula in manga form. 
it's like that's all she wants to read is like that kind of stuff and watch anime that's so cool. it's like hey cool. if it gets you into dracula i'll You've buy it for you finders those the the uh, jim henson horror series hmm because I, okay. I got one or two issues in those and they were really really good because it's horror tales from all over the world oh oh yeah we talked about this yeah, yeah. we talked about it a long time ago and then um there's a new ec comic coming out okay um and it's it's like in the vein of the old tales from the crypt i mean that's essentially what it is there's a new version coming out and that comes out the end of the month so we're going to be picking that up from there um what was i going to ask you it was related to that Mm, oh well it doesn't matter it'll come up i'll remember maybe Uh, i've seen a few things in the last couple since we've since we've talked Mm -hmm. um i did watch strangers on a train the hitchcock movie right amazing of course I, I watched cutting class have you seen cutting class no i haven't seen that it's a brad pitt uh it's like a slasher with brad pitt from 1989 oh okay so it's uh, early early it has the the girl that's the daughter and the stepfather if you remember any of that if that, any of that makes sense she's the main Maybe she's the lead it. yeah okay. and uh basically it's it's like proto scream in some ways um, but it has young Brad Pitt. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you want to watch something that's like a teen slasher that's like before Scream, that it's like right. in some ways like Scream. Uh, it, I thought it was weirdly good. Okay. I'd heard of it before, but I had never seen it. Right. Um, it was one that's always been on my list. And I just, I noticed it was on, it was on Amazon or Peacock or one of those. Okay. And I said, all right, there it is. Let's go. So I would recommend Cutting Class for sure. Okay. Uh. I also watched Dr. Giggles. Have you ever seen Dr. Giggles? Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. Uh, Really fun movie. Not a good movie, but like that's a VHS cover that haunted me as a child. You're in the video store and you see that guy. Oh, boy. I mean, talk about any movie that he's been in. It's either he's really, really creepy, really kind of, you know, scary, or Mm. he's just... He's a great character. Larry Drake? Is that mm-hmm. his name? I love him in Dark Man. Yep. He's amazing in Dark Man. And the sequels. Or well, the one sequel, anyway. Well, I was going to say. Dark Man yeah, 2, the, re- one, the but... Return of Durant, which is a yeah. hilarious name. Since, <laughs> how would you remember that name? But anyway, right. I also like him in um, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. He plays the guy that gets murdered. Uh, yeah. So, Dr. Giggles, fun. I give it a thumbs up. Absolutely. And uh, I watched, oh, for the Five Day Rentals podcast, uh, I was just watching along with the show and I watched right. The Art of Dying. Okay. It's a Wings Hauser movie. Yes. From 91. That's like essentially unknown. It doesn't exist anymore. The category that Kron picked was uh, You're So Vain. Uh, basically, <laughs> it, 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 basically, it's uh, directors who put themselves as the star in their own movie. Right. So the movie's directed by Wings Hauser. Nice. And it is a wild ride. Anything by him is a wild ride. I definitely honest. recommend it. It is weird. It's yeah. a weird movie. It's just a weird time. I would <laughs> I would recommend it. You can find it on YouTube That's or there's cool. other ways to get it. But yeah, I don't think it ever came out on even DVD. I don't know that for sure, but I don't I don't know if it's available it's like, at all. Yeah. Uh, I'm I think I remember that on VHS. I think but, well, I I have a rip that came from VHS, so right. I know it's from VHS. Yeah, but anyway, but I don't wow. know if it ever went to got switched over to what a weird TV. movie, it, right? And who knows? And what a great episode of Five Day Rentals, which you know, again, this show is just a Five Day Rentals, uh, you know, listen podcast. That's what I right. do, and that's all I do is talk about that show. <laughs> um, and then that brings me to what I watched. Well, do you want to cover Long Legs now? Do you want me to just get into it, or you, tell you what, I have something else I want to talk about, unless you do. Okay. No, I mean, I was going to say, you know, you were talking about things you watched. The only thing that yeah. I've watched, you know, and it's popular, that it's House of the Dragon. Right. And I, I almost like this show better than Game of Thrones. Cool. And I mean, it was something that my wife and I really watched all the time, except for season eight, which was horrendous, and one and two were super slow. But anyway, anything in between was was pretty good. Awesome. And then, um, I had watched... My wife and I watched the final season of Vikings Valhalla. 
I know you've been on that one forever. Things. Yeah. 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 So, and that was really good. And I, I love the, the historical references. They don't, I mean, the story is not, you know, accurate, but the references are. Sure. So, but I, I recommend both those shows and definitely not this week's episode was another kind of setup episode of House of the Dragons, but last week's episode was amazing. Cool. One of the best in that in that whole franchise. Well, that's great to hear. I'm glad to hear it's like good. Yeah. You know, when you say Game of Thrones is coming back and people are like, uh, do you remember not remember how that ended? You know, yeah. do we really want this? It's, yeah. it's good to hear that it's well, and suck. this is even if you didn't watch Game of Thrones, the House of Dragon is like a prequel, right? I mean, you get if you watch the show, you get the references, right? Like from Game of Thrones, some of the references of like what would be in the past, which is now House of Dragon, which is like currently happening, yeah, since it's a prequel. But you you don't have to watch one to understand and enjoy the other. That's cool. So. That's really cool. I've heard good things. Yeah. For sure. But if it's one of those that you're binging stuff on a weekend and it's rainy and stuff, you know. Worth checking out. It. All right. All right. But anyway. Uh, well, I wanted to talk about over this last weekend... I played the beta for a game called Concord. Okay. Have you seen Concord? I have not. Okay. It's a new shooter. I think it's I think it's a Sony game or the, maybe the studio is owned by Sony. Okay. Uh, but I think it's a first party exclusive to PlayStation. I could be wrong about that, but I think it okay. is. Um it's a it's another hero shooter kind of like Overwatch. Okay. But think Overwatch meets Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. Huh. Um, as far as character design and the attitude of the whole thing, it's kind of like punk rock, like, All right. you know, they're breaking yeah. some rules. And But but the thing that's interesting is this is not a free-to-play game. Right. It's not like a lot of those where it's like, yeah, you can play for free, but then you're going to pay to unlock characters and pay to right. unlock skins right, and right, stuff. Right. I think there will be some of that, but this is a $40 game. So you're right. getting a huge, you know... Chunk, uh, of chunk of stuff when you buy the game um looks like there's a lot of different modes it when i played it visually again it looks like guardians of the galaxy maybe meets like destiny 2 like kind of beautiful sci-fi okay um the gameplay really differs depending on what character you pick and i was blown away because that character select screen even in the beta was like two three four five i mean it was like there's like 10 or 15 characters to pick from hmm. and they all felt different okay um and they all were very unique. You know, some of the stuff we've seen before, it's like, oh yeah, right, this guy's right. your basic assault class and he's got an assault rifle and it, it's fully auto and whatever, right. he's got a grenade. But then yeah. there's, you know, the one that zips around with like a rocket launcher and can fly. And there's the one that's heavy that has a shield and all, whatever. It's it's a lot right. like Overwatch, but it feels different. It feels definitely a lot different from Overwatch. And the thing that I really am liking about it is that there is, they're really, really trying to have a narrative. Okay. So there's a lot of story to get even from the trailer. Mm -hmm. And then what I heard was that there's going to be new lore and, and cut scenes and like full acted things like every week. Oh, nice. When you log into the game. Huh. So we'll, it will be a continuing story and that story right. will affect the game and there'll be changes and new characters and whatever, depending oh, on what's happening in the story. Yeah. So it seems pretty interesting to me. I'm not a hundred percent like, I mean, I probably will buy it, but I'm not like uh, freaked out about, oh my God, I can't right. wait to play this. But right, right. I, I do think this will be a game for me. I mean, you can see all the Apex stuff behind me. There's right. not technically yeah. my stuff, but I do love Apex. Yeah. And uh, it has a similarity to that as well with the characters and the abilities and stuff. So right. um, it seems like it's got good game modes. It felt, it's weird because it, it did feel like Overwatch, but it also felt like in some ways it was tapping into my like, old school team fortress or like unreal tournament days okay or quake or whatever like the arenas right. felt like yeah. that a little bit it's pretty cool and it looks nice. beautiful so 
it might be worth checking out if you're looking for a competitive shooter. I think people okay. should probably keep their eye on it. It's called Concord once again. Concord. I know for okay. sure it's for PlayStation 5. I don't know about anything else, but okay. it's a gorgeous looking game and it, it looks a lot of fun. So, and, and I had a really good time with the beta, what I, what I got to play of it. So, good, good. I think that'll be good. Okay. Yeah, game-wise, I haven't played much. I've got a, actually, a, tonight, I'm going to get a new controller because stick drift sucks. Yep. Like, yep. bad stick drift. That has been an issue. Uh, I got the Pro PlayStation 5 controller. Okay. I really like it. I don't know if you're looking to spend two hundred dollars, but it is a Sony product, right? And it's got you can put the extra back buttons on it, which I legitimately rely on now. Okay. Um, I set those to like jump and uh, to do other stuff, and I really, boy, it's like an apex. It's jump and slide, and I right. can keep aiming while I'm doing those things instead of taking my thumbs off. Right. Um, it's two hundred bucks, but the thing is, the sticks are fully replaceable. They're modules. Oh, so nice. you can just, if you get a problem with the stick drift, you just pop them out, put a new one in. You've okay. saved yourself. And the modules are like 20 bucks. You oh, saved okay. yourself $60, $70 <laughs> or oh, whatever it is. Dang. Yeah. Um, so we're thinking about it anyway. I really like it. It has a little bit more heft to the controller. Okay. It's higher quality just in general. And you can customize the stick length too. Okay. I'm a person who likes to use those extenders on the sticks. Yeah. Well, with, with this controller, the Sony one, it's called the um, Dual Sense Edge. You don't have to do that. They're, they come with different sticks that you can just pop on. Okay. So it's customizable. I like that. Nice. But, uh, you know, spend what I'll you want to look. spend. But but it's worth, I think it's worth the No, extra. I mean, yeah, I, I will probably eventually get those. But like I said, I'm to the point that I, like, I go to my selection screen of oh. games. And it's going brrr. So, yeah. Maddening. Oh, I know. The worst. So tonight I'm just getting a, probably just the regular one. Well, and, and it's. I will it's, look into the. It's a nightmare when you're a kid because it's like, well, dad's not going to buy me a new one. I have to find a way to deal with this. It, right. we're, Chris, we're so lucky that we can just go buy another controller. I know. <laughs> Think about that. One, one of the rare pluses of being an adult. It truly is. Yeah. I, I remember when PS3 was still like huge. Uh, my wife, then girlfriend, we were playing and then it was the middle of the night mm -hmm. and her PlayStation just died. Oh. And it was it. That was yellow light. It was over. Yeah. And we were like, okay, we have the money. Let's go to Walmart and buy a new one right now. <laughs> and it was Walmart was 24 seven. You just go buy right. a new. I mean, and it, it felt good. Like, like an epiphany. epiphany. Exactly it was, though. Well, it was know, like, well, we can just get another the one. <laughs> separated and the angels. So... Oh yeah, it's they like, did. Amazing. I have a job and money that I can actually go get something. Yep. yep. It's crazy. <sighs> well, do you want me to talk long legs or do you want to do something else? Um, Let's just get the acolyte out of the way okay. first. Sure. I, I don't want to talk. Well, the know, first thing I want to say I about acolyte is positive I, think, I think the walls were wood. I'm just saying. They weren't. They were wood. I looked at the synapses. Because they... If They're you look in the mountain. most, if you look in the recent episode though, where the fire starts, it's all wood. You can tell that it's wood. It, it's supposed to be rock. Okay, well, somebody because messed up and made it mountain. wood. I, I, I know, I know what you're talking about, but I mean, let's be honest. All almost all these sets look like when you go to Walt Disney World to Galaxy's Edge. They I haven't like been yet, Chris. Park. Keep know, rubbing it I in. Know. I'm just, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> they look like freaking theme park. But oh my god, I just watched the last episode and everything I'm hearing. The, the eighth one is going to piss off normies and hardcore store pe Star Wars people. So I just, it's like, how can, how can you miss so badly? It's not been the show for me. I mean, it's I'm not, like, you know, I'm, a Stormtrooper's favorite, you know, store, you know, in, you know, on the side of the target, not hitting the target. Yeah, I get you know, it. I, I just, uh, it, I, I don't have a lot to say and, about it. And it's, all the lore breaking, and yes, it's, it's their thing. They can, 
you know, but what pisses me off the most is like, well, the extended universe doesn't exist. But we're going to take crap from the extended universe mm-hmm. and do it really shitty. That is an annoyance. I agree. You know, I it's totally basically, agree. it's corporate greed at this point because of the fact that to say it doesn't exist and use stuff that was, you know, principal facts in the extended universe. Mm-hmm. But saying it's not means you don't have to pay the writers right. that created that stuff. Yeah, that's terrible. I agree with that. It's terrible. You know, and it, just the inconsistencies on what even their own stuff that they're going against. It just, you know, I, I honestly, honestly think, and my opinion, but I think they are intentionally trying to tear down everything that was previous of Star Wars that made Star Wars. I, I'm sorry. It just, it's, it's intentional. It's an agenda that they're, they're wanting to get rid of the old for all this new shit. It's like the the, uh, the stuff with the new Ray movie supposedly coming out. It's Jedi Academy with Luke except you're putting Mary Sue Ray in. I like Ray. I admit it. I like Ray. I like the actress, but none of the stuff that happened, she earned any of it in. Uh I don't know. I, I you know I don't hate those. I I don't hate them. I don't know. I don't I don't have anything to say. I just I don't. Know. I know. It just it it kills me that I mean, there's fanfic that's better than what we're getting, and that's that's the one thing that annoys me. You know, you're gonna have, and and I hate the fact that the you know even in our kind of, I don't even really consider us quote unquote YouTubers, or 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 anything like that, but like the the shilling to get access. <clears throat> and it's horrible out there of what these people are trying to like justify in my opinion i don't have any info on this i know i know i'm but you know i'm i'm more into star wars really than you are i know i don't think that's true i love star wars i'm not saying that you don't love it but i mean as in i'm not watching diving i'm not doing that yeah. No, I'm not watching and YouTubers I mean, talk about Star Wars. No, no, and not even that. I'm talking, I've read almost every extended universe novel. Oh, I have? What I've, are you talking about? What? I've read so many. We were talking about that. What? You didn't know that? Oh, Chris. You've never told me any about that. Oh, I I love those expanded universe books. What are you talking yeah. about? Well, we learned something today. I, I, know I have a did. tub that is will disgust you with all those yeah. expanded universe books. No, because I have a bookcase full of all those. Yeah, <laughs> I know those books. Bookcase in my office. But yeah. I think they're not all that great. There's some of them no, that are amazing. No, and I'm, I'm not. Yeah, there are definitely ones. But in all honesty, I've never been a fan of High Republic. Me neither. Ever. This I mean, barely even feels like High, High Republic. And, the, and I was just you beat me to it. I was going to say, this is supposed to be High Republic, and it doesn't even feel like High Republic. No. It feels like like a couple of guys doesn't feel like when I think High Republic, I'm thinking like the sort of overview of everything that the Jedi are up to and that that the government and all the the galaxy is up to. Right. Right. This isn't just like one one guy thing. No, I don't know. And the one thing that annoys me the most about this show is the the whole and, and I do call this an agenda of making the Jedi not good well but isn't that what it is not there no not that they're not flawed but that they are not good they are the evil ones they are the they are the in 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 a quote-unquote certain point of view they're the the quote-unquote colonizers and the you Hmm. know bad cops and the you know i just and, and things don't make sense in this. It's like, why did 
you know, Obi-Wan Balding kill himself when we saw what happened, supposedly the reasons why he did it. He could have done something more no useful. Sense. He could have done something more useful than just kill himself. Well, that's it, it made absolutely no sense. And one, how the dude even became a uh, Jedi Master is beyond me. If Well, how do they let him just sit a, there for 10 years? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. None of it makes sense. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I, in my opinion, Leslie Headlamp should not get another gig after this. This is just, especially in Star Wars or Marvel or do your Russian doll show or, you know, something like that. But this is not for you. Like I said, it's not been my favorite show for sure. But to me, it's just there's just not much happening that I'm that interested in. And I mean, it's not making me mad. I mean, it's it's definitely doing things where I'm like, I don't really get it. But it's like, what a waste of Carrie Ann Moss. Oh, yeah. A literal waste. Five seconds in one, and then flashback scene in another. I agree. And then then she's supposedly this great Jedi Master. One, you get basically. Killed by a butter knife instead of a lightsaber. Yep. <laughs> and then you know, in in the flashback episode, she's you know going to hide things from the Jedi Council. She's gonna you know almost kick Saul's ass because he wants to throw himself in front of the Council mm-hmm. for what he did. You know, there's it's like I didn't hate that. I thought it made sense for her to do that. I thought that was valid. That's not a Jedi thing to do, though. Well, though we can't all be perfect Obi-Wan Kenobi. Qui-Gon, it does not listen to the council. No, oh, but what did Yoda say, though? Do we don't we don't like it, but we're gonna let you do it. Right. So but maybe he still, went, he still went before the council to do it. You know, he still went through procedures. You know, I you guess. can see that he was conflicted with even, you know, going to teach Anakin, you know, to a degree. But he knew, he felt, had that pull that he had to do this. You don't think there could have been shitty Jedi? I totally think there could have been shitty Jedi. They don't stay as Jedi, and that's just it. Well, yeah, these guys got killed. <laughs> No, they get they don't become Jedi masters, you know. There might be shitty Jedi masters. I'm just saying they could. I I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't know. And it's blurring the lines, which are typical today writers of blurring the lines between having good and evil. Everything is gray, hmm. and that's not a hero story. I'm sorry, it's not. And that's what, you know, they ended up in the, and that's why I'm not a huge fan of the sequels, mostly because of what they did to Luke. Mm -hmm. You know, it's this, you know, if it's a good guy, they have to fall from grace, no matter what. A good guy cannot be good. Because you can't tell me that a person that would, in front of basically the greatest evil in the galaxy, throw down his weapon and not not follow the path and forgive his father who destroyed countless means would decide to, to just up and pick a lightsaber up to kill his best friend and his sister's son. Well, also in the old that canon, zero but I mean, sense. in the expanded universe, he goes to the dark side. So, I mean... What is possible? It seems like anything. Yeah. I don't know. It is what it is. I, I have no more to say about Star Wars. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not now. Not on this. Mm-hmm. It's going to take a lot. Honestly, you know, like I said, Star Wars to me is like an abusive boyfriend or girlfriend. It, as much as I want, I, I want it to be good. I want it to, you know, be what it could be and it just keeps punching me in the fucking face i gotcha 
I'm just not as but, fired up about it as you. But I'm going to, you know, if so, the skeleton crew, if that ever comes out, I have zero interest in that. I, in all honesty, I may look at an episode, but past that. I'm going to be I pissed if there's not a skeleton in it. There better there's be at least one skeleton. There's a bunch of kids. <laughs> and Jude Law. I mean, he's kind of skinny, so you can say he's a He's skeleton. a skeleton, man. Yeah. I don't know. I just, it, it's infuriating because it could be so much more. And, sure. every, you know, it's like, how can you not see that there's so many things? And even getting away from from the, Sky, the whole Skywalker saga, there's just so much more than it could have been. And it's just not. I'm holding out hope for Andor season two. I like the first one a lot. I liked Andor, but I still have a hard time thinking it's in the Star Wars universe. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and in all honesty, I can't really get a <clears throat> like a connection with Cassian because I know what happens. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's about know. the journey, Chris. <coughs> it's about the journey. Yeah. But anyway, but, that was that was pretty much. And we do have some other for Ahsoka two news. Oh yes, I, call, I called my shot a long time ago. You did it on the show. Yes. Yes, See, you did. If they'll listen to me on shit like this, listen to me on the damn shows. But uh, Liv Schreiber is going to be taking over for Ray Stevens. Is that confirmed? Confirmed? Yeah, yes. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, I think he can do it for sure. I mean, he honestly looks the part. Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure. And Plus, they probably offered him kind of some money. And, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but he has that, that kind of gruff voice and, you know. But he can still be warm. Absolutely. Watch Ray Donovan. Awesome show. He does a lot of that kind of personality that Baylin Skull has in good. that show. Good, good. So, but yeah. I mean, that's it. That's all I got. All right. Rant over. Okay. Sorry, I didn't have much to add there. No, it's okay. You know, but I, but I will say with, you know, we just talked about sequels and continuing. It's like, can Hollywood get some some good, like non sequels, non franchise movies? They're talking about doing Clint Eastwood movies over again, mm-hmm. remaking them. Sure, it's going to happen. Many westerns. Nothing I know. you can do about it. It's going to happen. It's, I hate every ounce of that. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. God, you can make so many different, you know, westerns. I mean, any any kind of story. You know, they all have a have a you know kind of a diagram, but you can make so many stories that you would not have to remake something that came before. Sure. Yeah. Anyway. It yeah, it's a bummer, but it yeah. is what it is. Maybe they'll you know, best case scenario, it doesn't suck, but right. You know. And you know who plays that part? I, in all honesty, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head mm-hmm. that's anywhere, you know, remotely well known to play that part. Sure, I, I really don't. So, I would hope that they get someone new. That's that is an unknown that can pull that off and. If they're gonna remake it, get it close to the the character's original, and and make the story. I don't want this made for modern audience bullshit. I, I'm so sick of making a goddamn movie. You know. Yeah, hope it's good. I mean, I hope you know it would be cool if it didn't happen, but they're gonna do it. I know. Because they're, they're gonna morally do bankrupt and creatively bankrupt in Hollywood. I mean, I don't mind sequels and remakes, but <clears throat> I do want to see some new things. 
But I mean, know? all we're getting, look at, look at this year. What are we getting? Well, uh... Sequel. Prequel. Remake. Sequel. Sequel. Remake. Mm-hmm. You know? That's true. There's a lot of sequels and stuff, but like, I'm really looking forward to Maxine. I haven't seen it yet, but that's, you know, it's its own thing. I think that's going to be awesome. But I can't wait to see that. But it's a sequel. Yeah, but it's a, no, to an original, it's a it's, you know, it's to an original, original concept story. And it's, it's, you know, it does have some change, you know, some continuity to it. It's not. It's, it's not like, like it's the third Ghostbusters sequel or whatever, oh, or fourth yeah. Ghostbusters sequel. You know, I think he's doing his own thing, Ty West, that guy. Yeah, I'm a fan. Well, and then the thing I saw over the weekend, Long Legs, absolutely original. Yes. The originality stuff. There seems to be a lot of that in horror, which you know that's why well, horror that's rules. That's well, that's unfortunately that's the only one that's really you know i mean and, and there's sequels and prequels and all that kind of stuff in horror too sure yeah we're on with the nun the, five or whatever right no i right. think there's only well whatever the conjuring yeah. universe is wild yeah yes because we're getting another one of those the final one apparently the final nun yeah the no last... final conjuring oh yes i don't mind them doing one more i mean number it up. four is it would it be four is it four or five? One, two. Well, do you count the Annabelles? I mean, then you'd go six, right? No. How many Annabelles are there? Three? Okay, I was thinking there was only two. There's so many of these things. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Let me talk about Long Legs. Let me get this okay, out of the yes, way. Yes, yes. Now, you've not seen Long Legs. I have not seen it. Okay. But I am okay if we go into spoilers because I'm still going to see it no matter what. Okay. Um. Well, just so people know, I, I don't plan on doing a bunch of spoilers, but there may be some things. So if you really okay. don't want to know about long legs, and it's probably better if you don't, uh, wait, wait on this. But um, yeah, I saw it over the weekend. I saw it on the fourteenth, actually. Ooh. Which once you see the long legs, you'll know that that's very scary. <laughs> I did uh, see your posing, your uh, sexy poses with the poster. I on, did the pose, the yes, video. yes. Thank you. Uh, I felt very sexy when doing it. <laughs> um, so the movie is, it kind of starts out, the easiest way into it is to say that it's like Silence of the Lambs. But to say that the movie is just like Silence of the Lambs and that's it would be absolutely wrong. Right. Um, what it seems like is they're giving you the silence of the lambs vibes and sort of way in, but then they're kind of taking you by the hand and leading you in a completely totally different, different direction. direction. Yeah. Okay. But they kind of get you in the door by giving you this silence of the lambs type thing, which, you know, that makes the setup easy, to, easy to do and, uh, you know, easy to follow. And it kind of gives you some feelings and ideas about the main character played by is her is it pronounced micah micah monroe yeah i was looking it up real quick i yeah, think it's, it's pronounced it's micah. micah it's micah i think she's fantastic she was in it follows i'm a big fan of her yes um she was in another one called is it called the watcher the watchers where she moves to like Prague or something and then she's like thinks there's someone watching her through the window that was a good movie i liked it yeah I it's think on Shutter. The, watch, the Watcher. The Watcher. Because that newest one from M. Night Shyamalan is The Watchers. Oh, that's isn't it like his daughter or something? I thought it was his or some relative of his doing that movie, not him. Well, I know he's producing it. Right, 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 right. So, but uh, anyway, she's in it. She's fantastic. But obviously, people just want to talk about the fact that Nicolas Cage is in it. He is in it, um, although he's not. I don't want to say that he's not in it a lot because he's in it plenty, but I don't think he's like prominent. Maybe that maybe why I think that is because they sort of, he is the antagonist. He's the villain, but he's definitely not your standard. In some ways he's almost like the complete opposite of any standard villain. Right. Right. And I don't want to give you any specific details, but some of his actions and things that he does are, just straight up the opposite of what your Hannibal Lecter would do. Right. You know what I mean? Um, 
I mean, I've heard this is one of his best performances in a while. It's really good. It's really good. I mean, I'm not you, saying ever. I'm saying well, in a while. the reason I I sound hesitant there maybe is because I hate to say it's just Cage doing Cage, but I mean, a lot of it is just Cage doing Cage. Cage doing Cage, which, <laughs> but but listen, I have to it's I have to say yeah. I don't want to take anything away from him, and yeah. I think the performance is like bold and cool. Yeah. And it's amazing. It like helps. It really adds to the movie. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking shit about Nicolas Cage. I think he's incredible. The thing is, if you've seen him particularly recently, he does this thing and he continues to do it in, in long legs. He, he does like a specific okay. couple things. If this was the first movie you'd ever seen with Nicolas Cage, if this was the first Cage performance you ever saw, you'd go, what the fuck? You would be blown. I think you'd be blown away. Right. And so I really need to remember probably that like I need to be watching it like that. Right. I need to think about it like that because the okay. performance is nutso. Okay. He he has a look, he has a sound, he has a way of moving. It yeah. all seems so methodical and so thought out. I don't think any of it's just you know. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he's riffing. It seems like it's really it's just coming naturally. It's crafted and constructed right. to, for him. You know, he's really he's built this character, and he's he's he is this character. It's wild. Right. So, but yeah, so at the at its core, it's a serial killer movie. Um, but that's just the that's just the, the that's sort of the center of it. But there's all these other pieces. Okay. Don't go in thinking it's a serial killer movie. Because it is that, and it's about an FBI investigation. Mm -hmm. But it's also this, it's also this, it's also this. I mean, how much of a spoiler do you want? I mean... It's up to you. It's up to you. I won't give you that. I I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Because there's okay. this whole other layer that okay. that is not give, shown. Give me up to about midway through the second act. I can't. I can't. Okay. All right. Uh, but I will tell you I mean, that first first act is usually everything that's in a trailer. So like setup and sort of, sort of. Um, there's this element to the movie that you haven't seen much in the trailer. Although, if you've seen the trailer, you've seen this veiled figure with the eyes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might not be what you think it is, and okay. uh, it's something very interesting and there are other elements at play again i don't want to give things away because no, i think fine. that'll ruin the magic of it yeah. people should see this movie i don't want to be the guy that ruined long legs because it, it's cool i i'll tell you this though okay when i left the theater my initial reaction was oh that maybe that didn't have the punch i thought it would have that movie i didn't i i'm not sure if it really had the i was expecting something was, more yeah something and then on the way home because we saw it in Springfield. Right. The drive home, 45 minute drive home. All we talked about was long legs. <laughs> when we got home during dinner, all we talked about was long legs. Well, that's the kind of thing I like. It's the ones that, you know, you talk, you know, more oh. about it when, you know. It's, it's, it's a kind of movie that really leaves you with something. And it will leave you with questions. Okay. I have a lot of and questions. Yeah. But I don't feel that it's like, um, let's throw a bunch of shit in there and just leave it. And it doesn't really mean anything. And I just want to confuse the viewer. Right. I don't think it's that. I think there is some intention behind all of this. But there is some, it kind of borders on Lynchian in some ways. Mm -hmm. Where when you see something, it might mean something else. Or it might not. Or it might really be some other thing um there's just some really strange things going on okay it's it is like a weird puzzle i would i think the best way to put it is it's like a if long legs was was an album you wouldn't hear any of the songs on the radio okay you would your weird friend would say i just got this amazing prog album it's called long legs you need to hear this. And the first time you heard it, you might not be in love with it. You might not fully get it. But then if you listen to it a few more times, 
you start to pick up on things and notice things and put things together and you go, oh, wait a minute, this is a work of genius. These musicians are amazing. Well, I think with Long Legs, that's what's happening to me already. Okay. Is that I'm finding, well, that thing that didn't make sense at the time, I'm putting the pieces together. Sorry, and I'm going, a little more sense. I, I literally, I woke up this morning and I'm like, oh, the girl in the hospital said this, and that actually <laughs> means this, and that's what she's referring to. There's all these layers and little things and that come back on on okay. to itself. And it's, I found many little things in there already. And I think watching it again will be a really neat experience it, because there are some twists. There's a pretty big twist. Actually, one twist I felt was fumbled pretty hard. Okay. Um, all I'll say is it's a location-based twist near the end. Oh. So people who have seen it will know. I felt that twist was a bit of a fumble. The reveal of it. The concept is awesome. That's mm. that's why it's a fumble. Because the concept of this twist is so good. Um, Although I did kind of call it. there's a But there is a clue. There's a clue early on. And I was like, oh, mm. okay. I wonder what this yeah. if this means this. And it did. But uh, the w the way they actually reveal it to you, I think could have been more interesting. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Um, and I think maybe we could have maybe just like visually found a more interesting way to do it. That would have been more impactful. Gotcha. I don't know what the intention was behind the way they did it. If I could talk to Oz Perkins, I would ask him, why did you do that reveal that way? Right. Maybe I need to see it again. But at the time, the first time I felt like it should have been a gut punch and it wasn't to me right so well i mean in general it sounds like a movie that you need to see more than once to really appreciate all of it i'm going to recommend it to people although and i think this goes back to the radio analogy it's not the kind of album you'd hear on the radio this movie right <laughs> so therefore so it's not necessarily for everyone it, but i cannot recommend it for everyone right but for the people who will get it or think they will get it or want to try to get it right this is your movie yeah. This is definitely your movie. It is not the kind of thing that you're going to throw on at a sleepover and like everyone's going to have right. a fun time. Like <laughs> it is a it is a moody nightmare of a movie. Okay. It's I can't put it people are co comparing it to Hereditary and I just can't. Mm. I don't think so. But I do feel that it See that's it, that's that's my wheelhouse of movies. No, and of, I listen. No, I'm saying this. What everything you're describing, not hereditary, right? And just, I mean, yes. Yeah, I don't mean to take but, away from know. long legs by saying it's not like hereditary. That's all. That's all oh, I'm no, saying. No, no. It's different than hereditary, but it, I mean, right. I think you could compare them in some ways. But um, this movie is a strange puzzle, and I just personally, Chris, I do think you'll like it. I do think well, you'll like it. Like I said, that's you know, that psychological horror thriller. That's that's my jam when it comes yeah. to those kind of, you know, I'm, I like it. the, the slashers are fun, but yep. you know, those kind of movies, that's like, I'm, I'm really interested in heretic that's coming out. That looks fun. That looks no, that fun. looks really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I saw a trailer for trap, which is the, I saw, I movie. saw the extended trailer. Okay. <clears throat> and it made me more interested in the movie. For sure. I initially hadn't heard much about it until I saw the trailer, so I was like, mm, "The initial like teaser didn't do much for me." But right um, now that I know that it's because I, my first thought was because in the initial trailer they don't tell you who the killer is, right? But now they've kind of basically told you, yeah, or at least want you to think, think that he's that the killer, yeah. right? And it seems pretty obvious that he is, right? Or is it? the daughter right you know is it and something like that he's covering up the, you know which i think would be a really cool twist but um i think more importantly and more interestingly the movie is about i think it's plain and simple how's he going to get out of it right that's One what's going to get you yeah, no that's the hook is, yeah how's he going to get like we've set this all up we know the place is surrounded by swat team we know that there's no way out yeah what's he going to do and you want to go there to see that right i do for sure yeah so God bless and my Shyamalan for at least doing his own uh, thing, you know. Right. It's cool. You know, and love and hate, other than air, you know, Airbender, because that was just utter garbage. You know, love or hate some of his movies. They haven't all been home runs, but 
he does do something unique in every yeah i didn't i really i truly did not like knock at the cabin but you can't argue it's it's a unique movie it's got a twist it got me to the theater even but i i stood up and i said i didn't really dig that one i know you liked it a lot i didn't i didn't like that one very much uh, I just I I thought it was just kind of a neat concept, you know. On the whole, you know, revelations, yeah, kind of thing. You know, having you know, grown up Catholic and right. studying that stuff. It was sure. kind of for me that was kind of a a, a neat uh, take on it. I get I it. I wouldn't say you know I liked it. I wouldn't say that I liked it a ton. My real problem I was that like it. they said this is what's going to happen. And then I'm waiting for a twist, and there's no twist. This right. is what happens. It was pretty much straightforward, yeah. So, I don't know. And that anyway, was my, and that was kind of my biggest complaint with that one too. But, but anyway. But I think trap could be good. I haven't completely, and you know, like old. I don't. I also didn't get old. The old, the beach that makes you old yeah. movie. Yeah, Fine. That wasn't kind of. I didn't really dig that, either, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that he's got some good stuff. Yeah. to come so i'm not like saying oh he's done done yeah and i'm not done watching his movies no so you know but anyway i i do recommend long legs for a certain right. type of viewer i don't think it's going to be as divisive as say skin to marink or something like that right. it's not it's not that kind of experience but it's not, it, not a high concept but it is a thinking movie yes okay. it, exactly right and it's also a movie where you're, just, I think, maybe just going to have to make your own decisions. Although I, I did listen to an interview with the director, Oz Perkins, who is the son of Anthony Perkins, yes. psycho. Um, and he has answers for some of these questions. So, okay. you know, it, it almost is better to not know. I, I think right. I, I don't, some of those answers I don't really need. And that's the fun of it. Because I have to tell you, when me and my wife were talking about it, we had this crazy theory, this crazy theory about a certain character in the movie, the Nicolas Cage mm-hmm. character. Yeah. And while I don't think it's true based on some things I heard in the interview, boy, it was fun to think about it. And it was fun to what arrive where we yeah. arrived right. and go, holy crap, like, wouldn't that be amazing if it was this, you know? Right. Um, so it, it is a puzzle you have to put together. Okay. And it's uh yeah, I'm but but I'm telling you, that, that. I, I it's not just a psychological serial killer movie. There's more to it. There's more to it. There's a whole other element that they're not telling well, you. Good, good. And I good. that I really liked, but I just my first reaction was to go like, what? I thought this was like Silence of the Lambs. It is, mm-hmm. but they're at a certain point taking your hand and going down a different hallway. Yeah, I'm right, and I'm good with that. That's... Yes, yes, yes. So I, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I did enjoy it. Okay. I gave it a four on Letterboxd. I think that's pretty fair. I could maybe go four and a half if I see it a few more times. <laughs> I right. think it could become an all-time classic for me. Nice. I don't think it's uh, every day. I mean, it is not a feel-good movie. It's definitely, you know, whatever. It, but it's, it right. doesn't, to me, it did not hit me like Hereditary. Okay. It, don't, it didn't hit me like some of these movies that are more of a bummer. I mean, right. certainly not a happy, this is not a fun movie. Right. Although you can have fun watching it and there are laughs, you know, there are moments where it's somehow funny, but um, yeah, I, I have to recommend it. I really liked it. I, awesome. I want to see it again. Yeah. I will definitely be seeing it. Soon. I hope you do. Yeah. I hope so. you do. And you know, you you may feel differently, but for me that it was definitely a, a, a by thumbs your description, up. No, I won't feel differently, you know, and who knows, I may have some different, takes on what happens that you do i would love to hear i'd love to talk about yeah so maybe next episode yeah awesome okay well that's long legs that's all i really want to say i don't want to ruin anything for anybody else no well i mean we've got a trailer that just got released yes kind of talk about that let's end with this yes let me get that pulled up I think people probably know what this is going to be. Maybe. It is Captain America Brave New World. 
I thought they changed the name. Did they not? Or did it used to be something oh, else? Yeah, New World Order. Oh, right. First, and then right, it was right. something else. And then it changed to Brave New World. As long as it's brave. <laughs> I don't want this new world Stunning, getting scared. Stunning and brave, yeah. Because I don't want to take New World home after we yeah. picked it up and got all settled in for the sleepover. Does that make sense? <laughs> all right. Brave New World. Let's check out this trailer. Okay. First immediate thought, this is a Marvel movie. We're in, you know, we're in the White House. Nightcrawler is going to come up and pop in here and have a message. Yeah. Wilson. Thanks for coming in. He was just talking to his friend and trying to remember the name of the beach ball from Castaway. Right. It's hard. Well, thank or you for the, the invite, sir. What? Or I was going to say, or what the last train of marrying Jane he had. <laughs> I have to admit, I'm still getting used to the new look. He said, uh, lose the mustache or lose the election. I love him as Thunderbolt Ross. He's such I, a good choice. I wish they would have just kept the must put a mustache on him. I wonder Harrison if he refused was, to. I was going to say, Harrison was probably, oh, fuck, I am not born in damn. I wonder if he refused. Yeah. yeah. And he was so happy to deliver the line. Yeah. They said, remove the. They said, I had yeah. to get rid of the mustache. <laughs> right. And of course, you know, immediately that kind of, you know, tongue in cheek to throw back from, you know, William Hurt or Sam Elliott. Right. I mean, and... as much as I love. You know, I would have been okay with Sam Elliott playing this spot. Not when I can have Harrison Ford. If you're going to give me the choice between Ford and Elliott, mm -mm, it's Harrison Ford 10 times out of 10. (laughs) If he he wants to do the part. They told me to lose the stash or lose the election. Let's hope he wasn't just mailing it in like he's done a few of his parts. Sure. You and I, I haven't always agreed in the past. I want to point out, I know we've barely watched this, but I want to point out the look of this doesn't feel exactly Marvel. It feels like political thriller. Yeah. And I know that's what they're going for, but the look of it is interesting to me. It it does not, it's not this bright. I mean, the color tone, yeah, the color tones and... They've done yeah. that with the last couple of Marvel things. If they could do something you know. where I could take it a little bit more as an adult type film, I'm you know, there's gonna be a Hulk in this, I you know, whatever. But right. if if it were a little bit more mature adult, I wouldn't mind the vibes. I wouldn't mind that. But I want to make another run at making Captain America an official military position. And if we disagree on how to manage a situation, then what happens? Work with me, Sam. I like the little touching him on the arm. That's a total Harrison the Ford. Point, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's pointing thing. onto him. <laughs> I got a point at some point in this movie. And it feels presidential. I get yeah. it. I like that. We'll show the world a better way forward. Isaiah! Hold on. He said yes. Isaiah. Yes. I just, is that the guy from the show? From, uh huh. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, it is. The first Captain America, right? Well, not the first one, but the one what after. Is yeah. yeah, yeah, right, right, right. The other Captain America that they right. that was in the show. Uh, what was the show called? Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That's it. That's yeah. it. I yes, was hoping to see him, like, suit up. Well, supposedly he's, I mean, with the snaps that I heard of this is supposedly he, there's some kind of, Almost Winter Soldier. Yeah, that was my guess. He was going through. No, I don't like to see it. But and okay. Then the, the, the Hispanic kid that's sitting next to Anthony Mackie is the one that got the new Falcon uniform in the show too. I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. Sir, your inner circle has been compromised. Either you can't see that. That's a hell of a visual. That right the, there. Satellite dishes, yeah. Boy, they just look good, and they're red <laughs> for the Red Hulk. Because you know why he's red, right? Because of the uh, 
Is it the, the different kind of gamma related thing? It's gamma related. They used um, like not only the the radiation in the super soldier serum, uh -huh. but like space radiation, some cosmic radiation. Some real Fantastic used. Four bullshit. Some, yes, <laughs> that's why. That's why he was. Mad. Yeah. But you don't want to. See the kid behind him. Oh, I didn't even him. see him again. Oh, him? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's the new Falcon. Okay. I've just never liked Falcon, period. I just don't like Falcon. I've I'm fine with Falcon and I liked Anthony Mackie as Falcon. I'm not a huge fan of Anthony Mackie being Captain America. I would rather him just be Captain America and lose the I would lose rather the him be stupid Falcon. wings. I hate it. Well, the problem is is he's not he's not super soldier. He's yeah. not, you know. He's more more at this point Tony Stark than Captain America. That's fair. Yeah, I I do think Captain America should be the super soldier. I mean, that's I don't know, but whatever. I mean, I, I like I would rather see him as Cap. Hashtag than Falcon. Bucky should have got the shield. I'm sure we'll see more of that. <laughs> Global power is shifting. You're just a pawn. Come on. That's cool. That is cool. I'm not going to say it's not. That's but... cool. Like, I like the idea. Is like all he has, he doesn't have a gun. He can't defend himself. All he has is the shield. Okay. And he's got to beat these guys thing, up. He's getting tased on a metal shield. Yes, it is vibranium. It's vibranium. Doesn't it that's not? That's not how vibranium works. Does it, doesn't it not uh, conduct? No, not electricity. It's supposed yeah. to be concussive force and then be, be able to redirect it. Yeah. Not electricity. <laughs> Interesting. But anyway. All right. Again. That's badass. Well, we know he's not going to be Professor Xavier, so. No, imagine dodged, this. This is Professor X. No, this no. is Professor X. No. Fuck he's that. recruiting X-Men. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh militant style yeah. i've seen some talk about who this is and i can't remember the character it's an it's an established character right it is and i'm i'm seeing i don't i remember cannot the remember the, the name yeah. but fine well, whatever it's i like him basically kind of like an x i mean not necessarily but like an x shield like independent contractor kind right. of i kind of see him as like a bad guy nick fury yeah so whatever he and basically is, basically that's what the guy is. That's cool. He the looks cool. Is, yeah, I believe him as a cold-blooded killer. So yeah. put him in the movie. Good. I like yeah. him, and I like seeing him on screen every time he's on screen. You may be Captain America, but you're not Steve Rogers. The way that's so cut. What do you want to bet that's Red Hulk? Well, the way that's cut, though, it makes it seem as though he throws the shield and it knocks down half the White House. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> My first reaction was like, why did yeah. he do that? Yeah. Holy hell, maybe he did get the serum. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be. If that's right? the case, that's some good shit. Yeah, give me some. It's better yeah. than Steve, yeah. I absolutely believe that this is the the Red Hulk busting yeah. through. That what else could that be? Right. Especially right. the way the explosion does, it's almost like he's jumping. Well, and it's yeah, it's not just a explosion going that way. It seems like right. it has something pushing like a the force. Movement, yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Did he did he did he fly through a plane or something? Yeah. That's pretty he, cool. His wing cut through a fighter jet. I like it. And I then mean, there was a quick shot of I mean it was only for a split second of both him and Falcon flying. No. Nope. It was like yeah. Oh there it was. Yeah, there it was. Yep. It's yeah, that's right a jet. After, that yeah, is a jet. A jet. But it's literally like right after that. There they are. There, there they there. are. And I think that's the end, right? Close. Not the end. That's the end. 
Now, let me just come on. I like, uh, I look forward to seeing Harrison Ford as a big angry red man. Uh, It'll be interesting to see. Now, Mark Ruffalo did uh, announce that he is, has some part in this movie. He better be. That doesn't say much. I think Ruffalo is. It could be a cut scene at the end a credit right. scene or something but. but i think ruffalo is like an underused like he could could do so much for the mcu to bring us back on track like we could hulk could really be at the center of some good movement for the for the mcu i really think well i so. mean you know especially with this and then you know if we'll ever get the uh thunderbolts movie yeah yeah i know, feel like Mark that's Ruffalo been retooled can a lot. almost Mark Ruffalo can almost be the like new Nick Fury because they can't do just a Hulk movie. Why not though? Because it I mean, Edward Norton Hulk right, is fun, right? Really? Mar- MCU cannot do, and they cannot have the Hulk in a isolated movie. I never knew that. Yeah. Who has the rights? Universal. Is that true? Yeah. Well, then how do they do the? Isn't that? But they have this kind of partnering share thing. He cannot be the main character, but he can always be a side character. That's well, why, why wouldn't they want to do like what that's Sony's why doing? War Hulk. They just with Venom. Yeah, that's why World War Hulk was, you know, Ragnarok, Thor. Yeah. So. Interesting. Well, I have to say, just my impression after this trailer is. I'll be at the theater. I would I'll like it to be good. It. I'll go see it. I would I'll like this to be good. be good. The only thing that worries me is two things. Is one, this has had like major, major, major reshoots. Sure. They basically filmed an entirely new movie. And then two, it's, it's not always bad. Fire. That's not always a bad thing. It's not always bad, but the, but the bad part of it is one, what was it like before they did all the reshoots? Sure. I mean, you know, two, it has to make over a billion dollars to break even because of all the cost. Mm-hmm. And then you figure, you know, the splits for theaters and the studio, it's like. Well, look, I don't personally care if they make a billion even. dollars. The I don't reason, care. Wait, the, <laughs> I just want to see this movie. The reason I care. Is because you know everybody is censored and says, "Oh, superhero to fatigue, superhero fatigue." No, it's just bad superhero movie fatigue. So you don't want a good superhero movie to be heard no, by I the fatigue. No, I want a bad. I I want a good superhero movie. No, you so, don't. I, I, I you don't want a good superhero movie to be hurt by the fatigue of the bad ones. Is what yes, you're saying? Yes. And if you know this gets hurt by not at least breaking even. Mm-hmm. Who's to say some of these bigger movies are going to get scrapped because of the track record, especially lately? Mm-hmm. And it's just lose money, lose money, lose money. Sure, they're going to well, start. Really they just they're just it down and scratching and clawing to get to Secret Wars because that is a guaranteed billion. I. It is. It's got Spider Man. It's got. Who's it going to have? Pedro Pascal. It's going to have... Uh... Yeah. I do look forward to Secret Wars. Um, but... it's all Secret Wars is all going to depend on who they cast as Doom. And do they do the X-Men before or after Secret Wars? Hmm. Right. Because I... I you Personally, you cannot do Secret Wars without X-Men. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. That's tough. And then, but you're are gonna, you, and then are you gonna do X Men right? You know. Yeah. Because if true. you don't do X Men right, it doesn't matter who you're gonna have in Sinker Wars. You know, especially the majority of the fans are gonna be like, "Fuck that! I'm not going." Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, they've already scrapped the the Young Avengers. That doesn't hurt my feelings. 
I don't care. Well, I'm just saying, you know, the stuff that they've, you know, they've, you know, kind of had in the worst building. And it's well, like, I would like to think that's because any kind of King Dynasty stuff is pretty much DOA. Well, I would like to think that there are changes because they want to make something better. Maybe they realized something wasn't working. Maybe they want to make a better choice. I would hope. I would hope. I mean, and that's not happening in Star Wars anytime soon. Chris, we're not talking so, about Star Wars. Please. It's all Disney. It's all Disney. Though. But I'm talking about Marvel. They're run by the same freaking people. But I'm talking but, about Feige. I mean, how many times does he need to get his ass kicked before he decides to, you know, go a different direction? Well, we'll see. Maybe this is it. Um, well, Do we know who's directing this movie, by the way? Uh, I do not remember. Not that it matters much. Yeah. With these kind of movies, it's like yeah. the thing is already told to you. I want to find out who's directing it because I, I think that could help or hurt. And it's like the whole Blaine thing. Oh. You know? I, I, I think by the time they actually make a Blaine movie... Marcel Ali is not even going to be played. You maybe so. Um, so the guy directing this directed a bunch of shorts, the movies here, something called Big Man. I've never heard of. The girl is in trouble. I never heard of. Um, the Cloverfield Paradox, which I thought was like a middle of the road. I didn't think it was great. Something called. Lucy, Luch, L-U-C-E. How would you pronounce that? I don't know. Maybe. Um, And then Captain America. So oh. there's not a whole lot there. I I will say at least like with the Cloverfield thing, he's worked with some effects. He knows how to maybe do a little bit of that from that. But, but I mean, this, if, but I will that, say that. If that Cloverfield was not in there, would you have any like? I would be way more scared. I mean, I'm still scared because yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I mean, who knows though? I mean, it just seems like why do you, why do you pick a guy who, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe he's got the right vision. I don't know. Maybe it's a win. I just, you know, we talked about it last time. With, it worked uh, for Taika for me. So uh, I don't know. Taika lost his fastball a long time ago. But uh, anyway. He, uh, you know, we talked about it with DJ. It's like, give some of these independent directors that have been in that genre who know how to do that, but have done it on a smaller scale. Sure. You know, a chance. Sure. I mean, other than Cloverfield, nothing on his resume is anywhere anything like this. And again, I want to give him... I want it to be good. So, you know, I hope he does a great job, but I can't, I can't tell you for sure that I'm confident because I don't, I haven't seen his other stuff. Yeah. And he doesn't have a, he doesn't have any movies in there that I'm like, Oh, well, if he does it like that, it I will be fine. That, yeah. I was just saying that I can see that translate. Right. No, it's, yeah. that's what, that's what I'm seeing. It's, it's not like, necessarily bad, but uh, it does. It's definitely something to worry about. I mean, even James Gunn was doing trauma films and you know, yeah. Slither and his stuff was like a, that. To his the, translation made sense. His, I yeah, I mean, and I think Taika sense. too. I, I, I don't. I think Taika's still good. I like his stuff that he's doing. It's fine. I think he made sense to go to do Thor. The proof is there. I mean, that movie's great. So, I don't know. Which sometimes one? it works and sometimes it doesn't. Which one? What? Was which one? Great. What? Was great. Of Taika's. Of Ragnarok. Thor's. Oh, okay. No one is saying that the Christian Bale one's great. Although I don't hate it as much as everyone else. I think Christian Bale's performance is cool. Yeah, but you have I mean, that amazing villain. Yeah, exactly. In favor of uh, stupid jokes. Yeah. It's maybe not the best call. Yeah. But well, and then, yeah, I don't know. And then and then you go that, you know, um, uh, Dr. Strange, mm-hmm. you know, Madness was... I like that so movie. So hurt. Well, but I, I think Sam probably had a better vision of that movie 
And, and this is another problem with Marvel. You can see that he does take control of the camera for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I meant movie wise, I don't think it's as good as it could have been either. Oh no. Because but... the, the and the the big problem with Marvel is the story group. We're gonna and take these boxes. Producers, yeah. Sure, I get it. And that you know that could have been so much better and you know, honestly, other than some some of the camera angles and uh, you know one one thing here or there, it didn't feel like a Sam Raimi movie. I think it feels like close enough to Spider Man's. You know, I I don't think it's that different. Uh, I agree that maybe he didn't have the control he should have or over the story or whatever. Right. But uh, I I can have fun watching that movie for sure. It's fine. It's fine. It's got it's got some flavors I enjoy. Yeah. So that's it. Okay. Well, I think that's about wraps it up. That's it for me, dog. Yep. I got nothing at this point. All right. So. Well, uh, tell us what you think. Follow us on uh, wherever. Yep. <laughs> Join the Discord if you please. Yeah. Tell me if you think Doctor Strange is good. Uh, yeah. I got nothing. Is that a good way to end this? I got that, nothing. I, I got nothing. Yep. That's good way to end it. All right. Take it easy, everyone. Right. We'll talk to you See next you guys time. In two weeks. Yep. yep. Bye.